two weeks ago, we met the parents of 15-year-old Natasha Ednan Laparus, who tragically died on a flight after eating a pret manger baguette. Her father used two EpiPens on her, but was sadly unable to save her life. Well, yesterday, the coroner involved in that case made comments to suggest that EpiPens are, in fact, inherently unsafe and that they are not fit for purpose. Well, Dr Zoe joins us now. And, uh, and so this was Dr Sean Cummings. He presided over the inquest and slammed the pens as inherently unsafe, as Holly said, because they're too short to reach muscle. Mm -hmm. He highlighted that the EpiPen contains 300 micrograms of adrenaline compared with 500 micrograms of the Emerard, which is another injector similar. The Resuscitation Council recommends an emergency dose of 500 micrograms. Dr Cummins said that the combination um, of an inadequate dose of adrenaline and an inadequate length of needle raises serious safety concerns. Well, I have an EpiPen because I'm allergic to being wasp sting, so is it useless? It's absolutely not useless, but I think he definitely has a point that we need to look into it. If the two, there are two, if you combine those two things together, one, if the needle isn't reaching the muscle, even if you inject it into the fat in the leg, if it doesn't get through to the muscle, it will have an effect, but the effect isn't as large an effect and it can take longer. And there have been studies done to have a look at this and they've found that a significant number of people have a fat layer in the front of the thigh where you're meant to inject that is too thick to allow the needle to pass through to the muscle. So in EpiPens, for many people, it would seem that the needle perhaps is going to be too short. And what about the dose, the 500 and 300? So it depends on the severity of the reaction. And we know that Natasha, what happened, that terrible, unfortunate case, she had such an incredibly strong reaction that even with two EpiPens, you know, they weren't enough to save her life. So the, de the dose is dependent on the size of the person. So for children, the dose is 150 micrograms, but actually even for a child, if they weigh more than 30 kilograms, then they should have the 300 microgram dose. And actually, if somebody's more than 60 kilograms, and particularly if they have a severe reaction, then they're more likely, more, it's more suitable for them to have a 500 microgram um, EpiPen dose, um, but most EpiPens are 300 micrograms, except <coughs> these ones, which so these are the five. There's three different types of EpiPen, are they? So just show us what we're talking about here for anybody that doesn't know. Yeah, so first of all, EpiPen is a brand name for an injectable adre adrenaline device. And there are three different brands that are available in the UK. So there's the EpiPen, which is the one that most people have. There's this one that's very similar to an EpiPen that's called Jex and very similar, same size needle, same dose of adrenaline. And then there's there's this one called Emirade, and this actually comes in three different strengths. So the 150 for children, mm -hmm. the 300 and the 500. Mm. It also has a longer needle. So there is an oh. argument to say that this one may be more suitable for most people, and particularly women or people who are carrying excess fat, particularly in the thigh, are actually likely to need a longer needle. You've got um, uh, one there that you can demonstrate on, haven't you? Yes, I'm going to demonstrate on you, Holly. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. There's that's no need in great, this one. considering I'm the one that's allergic. <laughs> do you want to sit here and do it? No, you're fine. <laughs> um, if so there is no, there's no needle. There's no needle in here. So there's no the needle, action. so this is just a, a dummy pen. What's important to say is there is a national shortage of EpiPens, a particular brand of EpiPens at the moment. So some people may be being prescribed one of the two alternatives, which is fine, but they're all administered slightly differently. So it's important to make sure that you receive the training. A pharmacist can do that with you, a practice nurse, and there are videos online for all three. So important to say. So when do you know when to use it? When's, when, if you're having a, you're feeling like you need it, when's a good time to administer the pen? So if you know you've been exposed to the allergen, so in your case, Philip, if you'd been stung, then straight away you want to get it ready, you want to get it there and in your hand. And as soon as you start having symptoms that you recognise to be allergic symptoms, for many people that's starting to get skin rashes, so hives, it can be itchiness in the throat or starting to feel swelling of the lips or the tongue, mm. or it can be if your blood pressure's dropping. So if you're starting to feel dizzy or starting to feel faint, or sometimes people just describe this impending sense of doom. If in doubt, and you know you have an allergic reaction and you think you may have been exposed, better to use the EpiPen. A doctor said it. to me that if you are well enough to administer it yourself, mm. you don't need it. No, I completely disagree with that. You don't want to wait, you don't want to let that reaction get to the point where you're unable to administer that EpiPen yourself because as the person with the allergy, you're the best trained person 
to deliver it appropriately. Ideally, people with you, I mean, there might not even be anyone with you, but ideally the people with you would know how to do it if you were in trouble, but you're the best person who's been trained, who knows how to administer it. OK, so, so this is good for us all to okay. know, however, in case we were in this situation. So this one's the Jex pen, very similar to the EpiPen, except for the, that the cap's a different colour. So you take the cap, hold it in your dominant hand, you take the cap off, and then you simply press it into the front part of the side of the Through fire. clothes? Or would you ideally remove clothes? Through clothes. So okay. you don't want to mess around moving clothes. Avoid things like zips and pockets. And then you just put firm pressure on. And then you do it. You hear a click. And that is quite a firm pressure you've got there. Quite a firm pressure. You don't want to take any chances. OK. Sorry if I bruise you. No, no, that's um, fine. Hold it for 10 seconds. Yeah. Count slowly to 10 because if you're panicking, it can be easy to go one, two, three, four, five. So hold it for a good 10 seconds and then you want to massage the area, Afterwards. call 999, tell them anaphylaxis and get an ambulance to what, okay. um, what happens if it's out of date? OK, so because of this national shortage, at the moment, um, the Medicines Regulations Authority has done checks and has assured us that for the adult dose of EpiPen, they're actually completely safe to use for an additional four months beyond the expiry date. So that's a circumstance that hasn't really come up before, but it's because of this national shortage. But in any other circumstance or with any other pen, happy pen, I would advise about a month before it's about to go out of date, yeah. contact your doctor and your pharmacist and get new ones, but don't throw your old ones away until you have your new ones. It's better to use an out-of-date EpiPen mm. than none at all. Than none at all. And can I, go, can I go to the doctor and request? I say, actually, I know that uh, EpiPens are uh, hard to come by at the moment, but quite frankly, I want with, with a bigger dose and a bigger needle, so I'd like one of these, please. Can I change, can I change what I have? You can, you can request it, but it depends, on, it depends on various different things. So you know that CCGs regulate, we have prescribing formularies and we have recommendations. At the moment, because there is a shortage, all of us healthcare professionals have been given certain advice to follow. So, first of all, if you already have EpiPens that are in date, that are there and they are able for you to use and you don't have a very severe allergy, personally, I would have a conversation with you and we would see if we thought that was really necessary. In somebody like Natasha's case, where you know that she has a very severe allergic reaction that is life-threatening, then I think with what came out yesterday, I think that would be a reasonable thing yeah, to do. Absolutely. And as a doctor, I would support that. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you very much.